Okay, my name is Bob Booth. I am the former chair. Uh, a short bio is kind of worthless because I'm not exactly a famous member of the party. I'm not a big name speaker or anything. I pretty much am just your typical libertarian within the party. And I hope to make the point then that we are kind of different. We are kind of different in the Libertarian Party. We try to pride ourselves on being a little bit more informed about history, about philosophy, about government. And so if anything, I'm hoping I can show that a typical libertarian can kind of hang toe to toe with some of your politicians or the big names that maybe you have speaking in front of you today. But the important thing to notice is we are a different party. We are a different type of party because we are founded on principles. We're founded on principles and a philosophy that goes back to the American Revolution. And we like to think that this philosophy is itself revolutionary. There was a time when you did not own yourself when the individual is not sovereign over himself. Every individual was owned by somebody. Maybe it was a king, baron, whatever. But you did not own land. You worked it. You did not own yourself. You were a servant. You were a subject of a king. And it came to be a revolutionary idea that this country was founded on to say, no, no. You are sovereign to yourself. You own yourself. You control your own life. You have, you have control over your own liberty and freedom and the fruits of your labor. And that is what this country is founded on. The problem is, in our history, we've kind of lost sight of that over the last 200 some odd years. The nation was founded like that and it exploded in growth, but we kind of lost track. What happened was, in 1971, it kind of got to a head. Nixon was in office. And there were a lot of people a little frustrated because suddenly Nixon imposed wage and price controls. And so a group of people, including a man by the name of David Nolan, was sitting in his living room and saying, this is out of control. There is no party anymore that represents what this country was founded on. If we're enforcing price and wage controls, that's a sign the Republicans have lost it. And so they created a new party, the Libertarian Party, to try to capture some of those revolutionary ideals where you control yourself, you have basic rights, and you have basic responsibilities within that. The government's only role is to protect those rights, to protect the rights of the individuals. And that was key in establishing this country, the goal of your rights. Who did you get those rights from? They weren't granted to you by the government. They are natural rights. They were, you are endowed by your creator with them and they are inalienable, meaning they are with you always and nobody can take them away from you. And it's the government's role to protect them. You are free to act in your self-interest as long as you do not infringe on the rights of others. That is the goal of this country. That's how it was established, and that's how the Libertarian Party wants to maintain it. We're going to make sure that you are free to pursue your own self-interest, your own happiness, your own careers, as long as you do not interfere with the rights of others. Now, it pays to kind of draw this out in a map to kind of understand what we mean when we talk about these rights. And I know that there's a political spectrum you see every day in the media. They talk about the left and the right. You're going to see this, and in fact, you've heard it all before. I'm going to draw a little jagged line for a purpose here. Right now, you always hear about the left. Oh, I'm sorry. You're all going to have to suffer with my bad handwriting. <laughs> I'll do my best. <coughs> A lot of people want you to believe there's a left and a right in this country, and that's all there is. Well, the founder, David Nolan, doesn't believe that at all. If we were to shorten it into a line, it would be you versus the state. It is you controlling yourself or the government controlling you. That's how, he, if you were to do a straight line, it's you versus state, because that's who's control. Who's, who do you belong to? Who owns you? But what David Nolan did is he wanted to make a chart that's a little bit different. Oh my god, so much for my diamond, but that's as close as I can get. <laughs> what we want to explain is this. The left in this country and the right in this country, what we call liberals and conservatives, They do talk about rights. They do talk about your freedom. And they have their own pet freedoms and rights that they want to help you protect. The liberals tend to protect what we would refer to as your personal rights. 
The conservatives like to protect what we call your economic rights. So in other words, we are splitting your basic rights into two categories. Your personal, your economic. Sometimes people say your bedroom, your wallet. Basically boils down to the same thing. Your personal rights might be rights such as um, your freedom to, you know, you're here some, you, we're talking about the drug wars, your personal right to ingest whatever you want, homosexual rights, the uh, rights of you to do just about anything that's not economic, but just affects how you go about your every day. Who you, who you uh, mingle with. The conservatives like to say they want to free you on your economic rights. They want to say, okay, let's lower taxes, let's put the spending, let's uh, free you up so you can keep more of your money. I say they like to say this. They absolutely say these things during every election year. But what happens during the course of the uh, presidency, Congress, sometimes you see them slipping in what they're protecting. And sometimes they don't exactly hold true, but this is what they'll say. They tend to want to say, okay, we want to free you here, but they'll control your wallet more. Here they'll say they want to control your economic, but they'll tighten up on other personal restrictions, maybe religion, maybe other issues. What David Nolan wanted to show you is that if you were to chart this, you can chart this and actually score this. And there's actually a small thing called the Nolan chart. You can find it, it's also known as the world's smallest political quiz. <laughs> You can find out on a few different websites where you can actually take a test and answer about 10 questions. And depending on your score, you're going to end up somewhere on this chart. So if you score high on the freedom of your personal, you'll move up this line. And if you score high on the economic chart, you'll end up here. The libertarian quadrant would basically be up here. We want you to be free both personally and economically. We want you to control your own life. We want you to determine what's right for yourself. We don't want the government telling you what to do. You are not a slave to the government. So yeah, when we go out to events, we'll <coughs> give these people these quizzes and they'll take them, they'll find out where they are. And most people are a little bit surprised to find where they are. Because they'll, they'll think, gosh, you know, I've been um, a liberal my whole life, but actually I may be up here. And so we start to explain, see, we're not that different. We are not some fringe group. A lot of people say, are you extremists? We're extremists for liberty, you say, as some people say, but <laughs> really what it boils down to is we do agree with the liberals on some issues and we agree with the conservatives on some issues, but we just don't think either of them go far enough. We think they each go halfway and then stop. That we want everybody to have their rights protected on both sides of those, both types of freedoms, I should say. So that's the, what we call the Nolan chart. But again, it boils down to it's not left versus right, because if you look at left versus right, you're just talking about who's controlling you on what issues. Are we controlling on economic or liberal issues? We want you to be free on both of them and be up in the libertarian quadrant. So this is the libertarian quadrant up here. Down here is what we call authoritarian. This is where the state controls everything you do. And yes, we do have people who score down in the authoritarian quiz on when we take the quiz because they believe that the people should be protected from themselves and the government should take care of everything for them. Now, just because we believe that you should be free to take care of yourself does not mean that we are anarchists. That is the worst can I've ever drawn. We do not believe <laughs> that, we, that we, are, we are not anarchists. We don't believe in anarchy. We have some anarchists that like to join the party, but we are not anarchists. We believe in what we call minarchy. It's a minimum government. The government is there to protect your rights. You absolutely need a government to help you there. We do need the police. We do need the court systems. And we absolutely need a military. We need to protect our, sisters, our people. And we need to make sure there are fundamental laws in place. We need to make sure there's a rule book. We all need to play by the same rules. We need to make sure there's a rule book and the rules are protected. Because the one thing we hate is anything that is, um, any rights being violated. And usually they're violating what we say is by force or by fraud. Where somebody's either taking something from you or fooling you or ripping you off. Force and fraud. And that's what the government is there to protect you from. So as long as we are free to mingle and co-mingle and take care of all of our business and trade without force or fraud, we all should be doing okay. So what shouldn't the government be doing? Well, the government 
should certainly not be controlling you. It shouldn't be encouraging you to do what it wants you to do. It shouldn't be babying you, it shouldn't be your mama, and it shouldn't be protecting you from itself. And unfortunately, that's where we are right now. The government is trying to do all those things for us. It's trying to take care of you and make sure that you're protected and you don't fall down and skin your knee. So what's it doing? It's trying to make sure you're not fat by having these different rules and laws about how much salt and how much fat content can be in your food. It's telling you we can't have toys in our Happy Meals anymore because God forbid the kids will want one and they'll get fat off the Happy Meal. So it's telling you that oh, you we want to make sure you save enough money, so we're going to force you into this... Uh, so the Social Security system to help pay for your retirement, even though the returns on it are the worst returns you can imagine, and it may not even be there when you get older. It's forcing us to get a public education, which, okay, we can, we can agree on certain things, but then it's one size fits all for everybody for these number of years, and they don't break out of that system at all. And for some people, it just doesn't work for them. It gives you benefits for being married. It punishes you for being married. It does a lot of different things through the tax code, to punish you, but then it gives people rights if they're married that you wouldn't have if you're not married. It forces us, recently it was forcing, every, or not forcing, it was encouraging all of us to be homeowners because it kept saying, rah, 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 homeownership is good. Well, what's happening now? What has happened in the last few years? We realized that all those people who were encouraged to get homes had no business getting homes, and now they're not paying, and now there's foreclosures, and now we're seeing the results of that. That's government meddling. That's what government should not be doing is getting involved in all those things and trying to take care of us. That's for people to do on themselves and decide for themselves without government meddling in the affairs of the people and fooling with and encouraging us in our daily transactions. Now, when we say we have these rights, with rights come responsibilities, though. We are expected to be adults, you are given the freedom of an adult, and you have a responsibility to act that way. You have to take care of yourself. The good news is you're free to be a total jerk if you want to be a free to be a total jerk, as long as you're not bothering anybody else. But you got to pay the price for being a jerk in a society, because we are a society of people, and people have to get along. So that's part of the libertarian belief is, yes, you have individual liberty, but you have personal responsibility too. You have to take care of yourself. The people who came to this country, those original immigrants that we'd love to see in those old movies, they were coming here with that same philosophy in mind. They didn't come here thinking, oh, somebody's going to take care of me, somebody's going to give me stuff. No, they came here saying, I'm going to starve to death if I don't get a job, if I don't feed my family, if I don't learn language and fit and come in here and work hard. They knew what it meant to be an American at the time. They would come here, they'd work hard and survive and blend with society. And that's what we love about it, is that philosophy that was here before. And unfortunately, even Americans now kind of missed a little bit of that, because there's a lot of people who still want to be taken care of. They don't even have that same mentality of coming here to take care of themselves and move on and produce for themselves. It's not the government's responsibility to protect you from your mistakes. It's time, you know, people as individuals, we have to take care of it ourselves and deal with our own mistakes our own way. Now. When you have a philosophy of freedom like that, and you have a philosophy of getting people to trade with each other, you obviously need the economic system that can support it. And the best economic system that supports this type of liberty is, of course, capitalism. Now, what really is capitalism? Well, capitalism really just boils down to a free market where people can trade amongst themselves. I mean, is this particular system is so morally <coughs> superior and more effective than anything else we've ever seen in history, and, and you can take a look at that just by looking at what happened in the United States in the first hundred years of its existence. This country had a population that was 90 some odd percent devoted to agriculture, and within a hundred years, and when you're looking around the turn of the century in 1900, boom, what a completely different country we were, with the factories, the industries that popped up. We were a dominant player, going from just being farmland to being a dominant world power in just 100 years. And it's all because of the market at the time that was much freer than it is today. But I want you to understand this, because sometimes this gets misunderstood, especially these days, which I'll get to it shortly. Every time somebody buys something from somebody or trades something, that is a good thing that benefits society and it benefits both individuals. 